Yeah. Well, we we took you through the process of plucking quills out of a porcupine, and um, that was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do today is show you how to use them. Before we get too much further, yeah, we should say welcome to Stockman Original. <gasps> yes. I'm Max, and this is Brian, the original Stockman. Today, Brian is going to show me and you how to do quill work. Yep, we're so happy that you tuned in to our channel, and don't get to hit the subscribe and like and all that. And I've got a bunch of quills here that I've had from before, and they're all dyed and colored. I'm not going to go into great details about dyeing. That's a whole art form of its own if people want to pursue natural dyes. There's a bunch of resources for that and stuff I have used. Let's see. These were done with butternut husks. and used a vinegar for a set on those. Comes out a nice kind of a golden brown. But a lot of these brilliant colors here, I used Kool-Aid. <laughs> and um, the, it's color fast. I'm gonna grab that hat there. I wore that hat for several years, all the time, summertime, bright sun, everything, and the colors yeah. are fast. They don't fade. So it's cheap, it's quick, it works. It's not historically accurate. If you're doing it for historical reasons or any of that, you know, making like museum replicas or anything like that, probably not the route to take, but for fun and fashion, it works great. It'll definitely jazz up a project. All right, cherry, orange, lime, lemon, <laughs> and so on and so forth. There's some grape, you know, nice purple. So yeah, you can get a lot of nice, I mean, there's Ritz dye and things like that, all sorts of avenues, so I'm not gonna go too deep into it. So as a, a project, I thought, well, I can make a little knife sheath and someday I'll make a little knife to go with it. I made up a little pattern. I always like to make a paper pattern because if you like it, then you've got it, you can use it again. And what this does is it folds back. So you're gonna have a seam down the back and you get your whole face here, nice and, and no obstructions with stitching or anything like that. And then afterwards, you cut out a little piece of leather and you decorate that all up and you slip it in here like that, sew it in and so that center seam disappears mm -hmm. on the yeah. um, face of it, and it gives you a nice little area to, to decorate. I'm gonna transfer this design onto a piece of leather that I have just stretched onto my little frame here. I'm using this frame because I didn't wanna waste a big piece of leather by putting it into an embroidery hoop. These things are wonderful. If you're gonna do a large piece of you know leather or something, mm -hmm. like say you're doing a, a shirt or whatever you're building, you could do sections of it in one of these things. It holds the leather nice and taut and- Like if you're doing it in the back of a jacket. Or yeah, something. yeah, yeah. Something like that. To hold it. Right. But here I just want to do a little project kind of just to show you guys. There's There are people that do quill work that are expert at this and they're really, really good. Some of them are even on our, our tribe. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> we're lucky to have them. But I'm going to show you the basics, just how to get started and have a little bit of fun. That's all prepped up. We're using, for thread, I'm using, it's called Nymo. And what it is, is it's basically a, uh, like floss. Very, oh. yeah, it's very fine. It's unwaxed. It frays really easy, so you can, you know, I've got a long length of it here. Probably won't be able to use it all before it starts to fray apart. And I'll just have to add some more on. Uh, more, more on? No. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we're using... But in other words, somebody could use floss. What I quite often use is floss. And I was going to use this, but it turns out that this particular grade of floss is much coarser than I wanted it. And it's up being very thick. But there is zero difference between this and artificial sinew, except for the color of the wax they coat it with. Uh -huh. So this is a great material for that sort of thing. Sinew, which this is a bunch of, comes from the back strap of the deer. And when you break it down fine to sew with it, it comes up pretty much white. <laughs> so this stuff is a great substitute for it. This is a lot 
more tricky to work with, more self-satisfying when you do use this. Brain tan, natural dyed quills, beautiful. But we're just doing the basics. And then if you like it, you can dig deeper into it and do more fantastic stuff. So these quills I've had for a number of years and they're dried out, just been waiting around to be used. So one of the major elements is water, warm water and little dishes for each color. Not sure I'm gonna, how many colors I'm gonna start with, but we'll dribble two in here anyway. I knew it was gonna drool down the side. The first thing I should do is transfer my little design here onto the leather. I'm gonna use the suede side of this because then it'll look more like brain tanned. It'll, uh, it'll lay some graphite down so that you can actually see the line, but in time it'll wear off yeah. on, as opposed to say using a pen or a marker or something more right. permanent. I'm gonna start with a, a simple strip of quill work down the center. There's my track that I'm gonna work off of. It's just a straight strip down the middle. I'm gonna leave a little gap at the top for finishing off the edge there, binding the edge, and a little bit on the bottom. So I'm just dumping some, I got some really nice of the big white ones that I was bragging about on our other video. I mean, this is just like, yay. I got a quill that long to play with. Oh, baby. You do want to sort through them and kind of get a consistent size. And I think this is the size that I'm going to work with to start. What is the purpose of the water? The water is to just basically rehydrate. The warm water will soften the quills, make them so that if you try, you're going to flatten these quills as you go. You'll see as, as we're doing it. And if your quills are dry as a bone, they'll crack just like a bone. So you want them pliable. These all have a slight curve to them. So uh -huh. That's what you mean. Well, they're round. And oh. Yeah, so they're, they're basically going to lay down like a piece of ribbon, ideally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are beauties. Yeah, that's a d -d 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 dandy there. And they go a long way, so you don't need to get too far, too many ahead of yourself. Some of these big whiteies are kind of fat. Yeah, see, that's a, a pretty chunky one. And flattened out, that would make a, you know, that would make a fairly wide ribbon. Yeah. You want a certain amount of consistency in it. Let's see, what color shall we go with that? I'm gonna use something that is similar in diameter. That's what I'm looking for mostly. I see some good prospects in the purple bucket here. These ones look like a dandy start. And you do want a separate dish for each color, makes it easier in the end putting them back. This purple with the white is going to be nice because it look a lot like wampum. Wampum? Wampum. Uh, why I got a wampum? <laughs> now, wampum is the quahog shell, quahog clam shell. Oh. They have a, what they call a thumbprint of purple inside the shell. Uh -huh. You can't see it on the outside, but when you open them up, they'll have a, like a spot. That purple shell is what the natives prized for jewelry and, mm -hmm. and beads. And they made a lot of beads out of the white part, but the dark purple beads were more valuable, mm -hmm. obviously, because out of a whole shell, you only got a thumbprint of it. Right. And they're just about this color purple. Around find as many comparable size. There's plenty in here, just gotta dig. I'm gonna let them soak for a minute because the water was hot when I brought it out here, <laughs> but it isn't anymore. All right, so. All right, here we got the thread, tangly thread, not my favorite. Now, because this is going to be a knife sheath and the back side of this project is never going to show, I'm going to start stitching from the back. I'm not going to worry about hiding my threads because they won't be around. There it is. Okay. So generally, I anchor with the root end. So I generally take my needle and prick the quill so that the air that's inside the quill is there's like a foam inside there but there's also air and in order to flatten a quill you need to give it the air some place to go so see, that's a nice uh nice flat piece of quill there i'm going to tack her down actually before i do that my beer oh ah. 
that happens, sometimes you don't see the little cracks in the quill and tell us about it too late. Okay. okay, so I've got that one held down. Now I'm going over to this other corner. Come back up. All right. I'm going to go. It's kind of a back stitch here I'm doing. Right now, this guy's going to come over and go underneath that. Thread like that. Okay. Now I'm going to jump over here. Trick is to keep it the what you've already stitched tight. helps okay now we go back over here there it is <clears throat> okay so now the white guy gets to come up over here it's kind of like plating breathing I'm using, in this particular case, a number nine Glover's needle. And Glover's needles are a wonderful thing. You can get them at uh, most craft supplies. We use Crazy Crow. They have a grand supply of various sizes. Number nine is fairly small and yet not too small. I've got some smaller ones, but it just gets crazy after a while. You can see how this uh, Nymo is already starting to go goofy on me. It's not my favorite thread to work with. Uh. So this is going to come out kind of like a little barber pole pattern. But it goes along. Now, this is just two quills, and we've already covered about a half an inch of distance. Not him again. Hi, Ben. Why he's not on the table in the middle of everything yet, I don't know. But I'm sure he will be. All right, so we've gotten to the end of the quill. Oh, my. What do we do? Yeah, ooh, ooh. I guess we're done. No, we have more quills. So what we're going to do is repeat the whole flattening business. You can clip the end off if you wanted to. I don't usually. I just like to prick it by just pricking it the air squeezes out and then it seems to like close up a little bit on itself so it uh, stays flat and clip the business end a little bit off of this one just because i want to make sure it disappears so then take the root end and slip it underneath the last quill like that and snug her down and i'm going to do the same thing to the purple one here these long quills are really a lot of fun to work with because you can go quite a ways with them. I'm going to bring the white one over. Whenever you're splicing new stuff, into old stuff. It's always hard to get started again. For for me, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Same with like adding more fiber in when you're twisting cordage or whatever. I actually tuck that tail underneath the white one because I think I can. Yeah. That purple one back over. The old times, they used to use the sinew. They didn't have needles, so they'd be poking holes with an awl, one hand, and doing all this stuff with another hand, and just imagine how complicated that could be. 
All right, we jumped ahead a little bit. Oops. Oops. (laughs) (laughs) While we were taking notes. One of our commenters said, if you want wholesome but boozy content, check out Stockman Original. (laughs) You are. Yeah. So, yeah, we've all the way down as far as I'm going, and I'm getting uh, ready to end it off. So what I'm going to do is tuck this white, last white quill in, and then I'm going to roll the purple one in under itself and that'll be my my final stitch and then I'll trim the quills off to hide the ends or the ends go away. And so now once these quills dry they won't try to like unravel themselves they're pretty much stuck where they are. So basically all I'm going to do is tie the thread off in the back and trim those ends off flush with the with that quill and that'll, we'll call her good. Like I said, this is a pretty basic introductory to it. There's a whole lot of learning that you can do in this. It's a fun craft. You know, unfortunately, these poor little buggers end up dead on the side of the road. You know, if you can make a little use of it before you let them go back to the earth, then yay, yay for you. <laughs> Way for the porcupine. You can see on the back, it's just a back and forth stitch. I'm not worried about the thread showing because they won't. Sizable triple knot in there so she don't come apart. And being nylon, it likes to untie itself. So I generally hit it with a little bit of flame and it melts back to a bead and done. Thing you don't want. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Melt them all off. Yeah, womp, womp, womp. that's it. So from here you can, you know, keep elaborating, put more down the sides, different colors, whatever you want to do. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and let us know what else you want to see. Oh wait, I got one for you. Don't forget to tell your friends. If each one of you tells one friend, you'll double our subscription. Cheers and we'll see you on the next. Aww. Cheers. (laughs) See you on the next one.